These are Skyblock coins. Most people grind for hours to get more of them. But the problem is, when too many people start grinding the same method, it gets destroyed. So to prevent this, I have decided to put not 10, not 50, but 100 money making methods in a single video. To make this video, I scoured through multiple YouTube tutorials, talked to a lot of Skyblock sweats, and went through a bunch of guides on the internet. But while I was going through those guides, one thought never came into my head. What if the websites I was going to were stealing my data? Do you have such fears? Then you, my friend, need ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to secure your data through military-grade encryption. Not only that, but it also gives you access to region-locked content. I personally use it for stuff like Netflix and Crunchyroll. Like on the US version of Netflix, there's no Rick and Morty. But all you have to do is change your location to the UK. And boom, you can now watch Rick and Morty. And did I mention ExpressVPN can save you money? In the US, a 4K Netflix plan costs almost 20 bucks. But if I switch to somewhere like Turkey, it costs less than 7. Which means you save 13 bucks per month by using ExpressVPN. And if you use my link, you'll get a year of ExpressVPN plus 3 months free for less than 7 bucks a month. But free VPN is exist. Yes. But free VPNs are an absolute scam. They don't work on websites like Netflix or any other big streaming service as they don't have the budget to run multiple servers. And they even sell your data. In short, ExpressVPN, good. So go to expressvpn.com slash coldbug. That is e-x-p-r-e-s-s-v-p-n dot c-o-m slash c-o-l-t-p-u-g and get ExpressVPN today to protect your privacy, watch region-locked content, and save some money. Thank you ExpressVPN for supporting the channel. Now onward with the video. First, I would like to start off with a few passive money-making methods. The first place you can make a bunch of coins is the forge. All you do is forge some stuff. You can check the margins by using the High Minions website. If you don't plan on mining, I would recommend getting the Quick Forge perk, as it improves this by a lot. The next method is upgrading pets through cat. Some pets become really expensive when you upgrade them, like this monkey pet. That costs 5.1 mil for an epic, but a legendary monkey costs more than 26 mil. So that's a profit of more than 4 million coins, if you include the upgrade cost. But a better way to make money is by upgrading high level pets, as the margins get better. You can find good pet flips using the Net website. But you need to manually look for the actually good high level pet flips. Basically, the best pets to flip are the ones people actually use. The next thing I'd like to talk about are minions. They're literally free money. You should try and get at least 25 minion slots. And the slots are unlocked by crafting unique minions. Now the best minion changes from time to time. So use this minion profit calculator in the iPixel wiki. But remember it isn't accurate. At least for those minions that use corrupted soil. The next thing is the community center, as you can gain 5 more minion slots and 50k coins for free. New players can also get a free booster cookie. Very good. You can also make money by doing your daily experiments. It is really easy and can make you a decent bit of coins in the long run. You can also level up pets for extra profit. The next kinda passive way to make coins is through Arania. Bring an armorless person to Arania. Then she'll consume them. And for your efforts, you'll get a chime, which is worth around 700k coins. You can do this weekly, meaning you can make 100k per day without any effort. Also, according to the official iPixel wiki, the pet XP awarded from the chime is affected by things like your teaming level and pet XP boosts. XP share is an item that gives 25% of your earned XP to any pet holding it. Meaning if you grind anything like dungeons or especially mine mithril and don't have a pet with an XP share, you're literally throwing away free money. 
as you could have made a bunch of money by passively leveling up the pet. Also, XP share doesn't steal XP from your active pet. I was gonna add booster cookies, but from my calculations, you can't really make profit from them directly. But indirectly, you can make a bunch of money through the free magic find, extra skill XP, and the coin save. The bazaar and auction house make a lot of money if you know how to use them. So in this section, I'll try to cover all of the flipping methods I know of. I won't directly name any items as the margins and profits change with time. Also, all of these methods are much easier with the NEO mod. First, we have bazaar flipping. For bazaar flipping, I would recommend a website called skyblog.bz. In bazaar, there are a bunch of methods to make money. But the most common ones are NPC flipping, where you buy items from the NPC and sell it to the bazaar, craft flipping, where you buy materials and craft something and then sell it to the bazaar, book flipping, where you buy books and then upgrade them and sell them for more. Why do they sell for more? Because people are lazy. Investing is when you buy a bunch of a certain item, expecting it to go up in price. Most of the people who make money through investing are people who are really smart and use graphs and maths and research to find out what items are gonna go up in value. The other group contains people who buy random stuff and YOLO! there's also boring regular bazaar flipping where you create a bazaar buy order for an item that has a high margin and similar supply and demand and then wait and then sell and then create an order again and then wait and then sell you get the gist okay now let's talk about something fun auction house flipping remember to get the new mod if you actually want to make profit first method we have is craft flipping where you buy materials and then craft them into items that sell for profit you can also make coins by upgrading gear adding stars or enchants Sky Coffin Net is the best place to find them. The next method is bin flipping, where you find an item going for cheap on the bin and then sell it for more coins. It is typically done with high level pets and items with valuable upgrades. The other method is ending soon flipping, where you bid on items that are ending soon if they are going for lower than the lowest bin or lower than they usually go for if you cannot bin it. The next method is market manipulation where you buy items that have low supply and then put them up for higher. The next method is NPC flipping, where you buy items from the NPC and sell it to the auction house. Now one of the most consistent NPCs is the traveling zoo NPC. The next method is investing, where you hold items that you think will go up in value. The best items to invest in are cosmetics that look cool. Literally. Items like the grand searing rune, various pet skins, are really expensive now because people thought they were cool. The next method I'd like to talk about is lowballing. You will need a decent bit of coins and the NU mod for this unless you want to get scammed. But how this method works is you buy items from people who want quick cash for a small amount of profit, usually around 70 to 90% lower than the lowest bin. Also, don't try to lowball farming items, minions, or anything that has an unstable price including items that have recently come out and items with no real value, like furniture. To find potential customers, advertise in the hub and Discord servers. Also, a good-looking island and a high amount of HP makes you look more trustworthy. You can provide various services to people and charge a fee for it, like leveling up pets. Now, different pets have different rates. I searched for the official prices but according to some sources, people were getting scammed. So most Discord servers decided to remove this. So to find the rates, I checked the price of a few pets on the age. And this is what I found. In case of combat pets, leveling up a golden dragon from 0 to 100 nets you around 46 coins per combat XP. And leveling it from 100 to 200 nets you around 3 coins per combat XP. Leveling up an epic e-drag also nets you 3 coins per combat XP. But leveling up a black cat nets you around 1.17 coins per combat XP. So just charge people based on how much grinding you have to do. 
I'd recommend 5 coins for the G-Drag, 3 for the E-Drag, and 2 for any other combat pet. Also don't use candies, as it will hurt the price of the pet by a lot. Some people also prefer it when your pet isn't holding any item. Now the best method to earn combat XP is by grinding flares. Using a full set of high tier mana region veteran aurora armor. You should also get equipments with the veteran attribute and a gauntlet of contagion. Cause it's good for flares. Trust. Flares are also the best way to spawn vanquishers. That are worth around 1 million coins. A lot more if you do Kudra. But you could also make a decent amount of coins from ghosts. If you have a good melee setup. But remember to use the veteran attribute. With this setup, you should be able to net around 4 to 6 mil combat XP an hour. Depending on your veteran and teaming level. Which in coins is around 20 to 30 mil per hour for the G drag, 12 to 18 mil for the E drag, and 8 to 12 mil for any other pet. Mining pets make around 1.2 coins per XP. If you mine Mithril with an Armadillo pet with a mining XP boost, you should be able to gain around 9 to 15 mil mining XP for your pet per hour. If my math is correct. As I don't know if the boosts are multiplicative or additive. Which is around 10 to 18 mil per hour. Excluding the profits from Mithril. All you have to do is find a decent Mithril patch. I'll link a video showcasing this in the description. Foraging pets make around 1.6 coins per foraging XP. But I wouldn't recommend foraging to upgrade foraging pets. As it doesn't give a lot of XP. I'd rather mine Mithril while having the pet equipped. Or grind flares. As it is actually better. Even then it won't make a lot of coins. Only around 3 to 5 mil per hour. Fishing pets make around 1 coin per fishing XP. The best way to upgrade fishing pets is by fishing in the Crimson Isles. With full Magma Lord armor and a Hellfire rod. You should also have Fishing 45 at least and you need to catch the Silver variant or higher for all trophy fishes. The weapon of choice should be a Hyperion or a Fire Fury Staff. With this setup, you should be able to get around 5 mil fishing XP for your pet, which is around 5 mil per hour. I would recommend forming a fishing party to leech drops. Alchemy and enchanting also exist, but alchemy costs more than it's worth and enchanting is more passive. Not every player is a 40,000 weight Giga Chad. So they need help to unlock stuff like the Juju Shortbow, the different attributes, or the Dark Claymore. That's where you come into play. You help them skip progression, and they pay you for it. Also, I would recommend being an official Discord carrier. On big Discord servers, like Skyblock Z and Skyblock Maniacs. If you want to actually make profit, please don't try to carry people when you can barely do the boss yourself. Kudra carries can be extremely profitable. As according to Skyblock Maniacs, a single Kudra carry can cost up to 8 million coins for the basic tier. And a single Infernal Kudra carry costs more than 50 mil per, which is absolutely broken. Now you cannot solo all the tiers. Still, you should be able to make bank off of Kudra carries. You can make a ton of coins from Slayer carries as well. The most popular Slayer is Enderman. As a lot of really good recipes are unlocked from this slayer. Carry people in dungeons. Nothing more to add. The best floors are probably F4, F5, F6, F7 and M7. You can charge people to craft some items like talismans, minions or other things. As some players want items they are not yet ready for. You can usually find requests on big discord servers. Don't look for requests on random lobbies. As it is usually a scam. Same as crafting, you can charge people money to add various reforges to their gear. As some players want good reforges without spending a hundred hours on the game. You can usually find requests on big discord servers. I talked about vanquisher grinding a bit in my pet leveling section. But vanquishers make a decent amount of money. Directly or indirectly. I would recommend forming a vanquisher party of around 6 people. The setup you need is full hype mage and a totem of corruption. The kudra pet and the wither piper will buff your chances. You should farm the following mobs. The magma cube riders, the mobs in the caves, the stronghold mobs, the cows and the flares. Grind flares if and only if your party has a high level mage. Else don't bother with it. Just double up in the stronghold. I can't really say how much you'll make 
as it's heavily RNG reliant. But a rough estimate should be around 3 vanquishers an hour per person, meaning 14 stars per hour or 14 mil an hour. But if you want to actually make coins, I would recommend saving the stars for Kudra. Kudra is one of the most broken money making methods in Skyblock for coins, as it can legit make you more than M7 at higher stages. Since you can make a lot of coins from the equipments, Crimson Essence, and especially the attributes, as some sell for a lot of coins. This guy claims you can make 75 mil an hour from this. So if it turns out to be wrong, go bully that guy. If you want a guide from T1 to T4 Kudra, I'll link it in the description. I'll also link a T5 Kudra guide in the description. There are 5 major mini bosses. Most of them don't really make a lot of coins, but they give a decent amount of Kudra keys. For the bleed soul, spam your weapon. Die. Spam your weapon again. It's not really profitable though. For the mage outlaw, spam your weapon. Wait. Spam your weapon again. Spam your weapon again. Again, it's not that profitable. But you can AFK it and charge thunder bottles. The Barbarian Duke can potentially make more than 12 mil an hour if you have a rank as you can warp to the skull directly. You can also make a decent amount of coins by farming the Duke normally and farming the other mobs while it respawns if you have a hype. The Ashfang is really difficult to solo and even if you can solo it, it is really slow. So get a party with two hype mages, a claymore burst and a gold door tank. I've also heard that the spirit mask is really good for tanks. The magma cube. Don't even bother with it. Fine. Term go pew pew pew. If you want to make the most from equipment farming, you need to do T3 Kudra at least once for the mana region and veteran attributes. Also T5 is even better because the magic find attribute. The best weapon for this is a Hyperion. The mobs you can farm are Magma Cube Riders that can be farmed for Magma Chunks that can then be used to craft the Magma Necklace. You can also farm the Spiders for extra profit. You can also Lobby Swap and farm these Magma Cubes if you cannot deal enough damage. The Blazes can be farmed for Blaze Ashes. If you cannot deal a lot of damage, you should farm them in the Stronghold. But if you can deal enough damage, I would recommend farming them in the Smoldering Tomb. The wither skeletons in the stronghold can be farmed for ancient cloaks. And finally, the best mob in my opinion are ghasts that can be farmed for ghast cloaks from 9 pm to 5 am skyblock time in this area. The best weapon for this is a terminator or juju. You can farm materials for pets in the crimson isles. You can get burning eyes that can be used to craft the snail pet from spiders and digested mushrooms that can be used to craft the mushroom cow from the mushroom bulls. Mining red sand can make a few million per hour if you use a snail pet and full young armor. Similar to red sand, you can also make a decent amount of coins by farming mycelium. Now a lot of people say that slayers are not profit. So let me compare all of the methods using the best RNG meter item. T5 Revenant isn't really that bad if you choose the Warden Heart. As you not only get the Warden Heart, but you can also obtain a bunch of other stuff, including a ton of combat XP. It won't make a lot of coins, but you will probably break even. Yeah, Tarantula doesn't make any money. Sven can make some coins, as the teeth make a lot of money, and the capacitor is really nice as well. You probably won't make a lot, but eh. I'm bad at Enderman Slayer, so I can't say if it's profitable. But I think it probably is. I'm even worse at Blaze Slayer. But I heard it's bad. And turns out they were right. Unless you have got tier RNG, you won't make a lot of coins from Slayers. But there is another method related to Slayers that makes quite a bit of money. You see, most Slayers have Slayer specific armor that have this thing called a kill counter. And high kill armor goes for a lot of coins. So you could make some coins by upgrading kills on the armor. The best armor to do this with is Final Destination. Excluding mining, there are a bunch of ways you can make coins in the Dwarven Mines. You can farm Ice Walkers that drop their armor and Glacier Jewels. 
It easily makes around 2 mil per hour with a flower of truth. You can farm treasure hoarders in the Dwarven mines and since the price of Starfall is quite high right now, you should be able to make 2 mil per hour with a flower of truth. Ghosts can be found down here and the main reason you should farm them is that they drop sorrows and straight up give you a million coins. If you want some extra coins, reforge your sorrow to renowned for the extra magic find and level up a G-drag for extra profits. They have 1 million HP. So if you cannot deal enough damage, I would suggest using a level 100 Mithril Golem. Automations can be found in the Crystal Hollows. The best place to farm them is the Lost Precursor City. And the best combination is Mage Armor for mobility and Burr's Armor for damage. The best pet is a Black Cat and the best item is a Flower of Truth. You should also follow proper routes when farming them. I'll link a video guide to it in the description. You can use the jungle pickaxe in the jungle part of the crystal hollows to farm sludge juice. You should max out your mole perk and get at least 1500 mining speed. You can also use a few pieces of mineral armor for extra coins from the ores. As long as it doesn't hurt your mining speed. Try to get the best fishing armor you can like shark scale, thunder or magma lord and a good lava rod. The best attributes are fishing speed and double hook. You should get a legendary flying fish for the extra fishing speed. Then start lava fishing in the precursor remnants. Use fish bait by the way. Nucleus running is where you place 5 crystals in the crystal nucleus. Hoping to get good loot. I would recommend watching Implodent's video to get a better understanding of this strat. Basically, some structures in the Crystal Hollows are worth a lot of coins. For people who mine, all you have to do is join the Mining Cult Discord, then look for the structures, and then post it there. And you should be able to find a buyer. Also, don't post it if you see someone else mining. Arachne is a spider boss that can be found in the spider's den. You can place down these Arachne's callings and spawn Arachne. It has a few drops that make a decent amount of coins. Now my heart of the mountain level is garbage. So for this section I consulted Implodent. He's a massive mining sweat. And he has videos covering all of these methods in more detail. He also really loves miners. So you should check out his guides and his discord. If you want more information related to mining. First things first. If you want to mine, you'll need three things. Heart of the Mountain 7, 4 mil gemstone and mithril powder, full jaded sorrow, and a pristine 5 gemstone gauntlet with all flawless gemstones. Except for topaz. Get a perfect topaz, as topaz gives pristine. For the talismans, you should get a titanium ring, a ring of power with flawless amber and jade, a jungle amulet, and a mineral talisman. Now first we have gemstone mining. The best gemstones right now are sapphire and ruby. For sapphire you'll need an armadillo pet. And for the ruby you'll need a ball pet. I'll link guides for both of them in the description. But honestly any gemstone can be really good for profits. As long as you can find good roots. If you have a completely maxed mining setup. Then you can make coins from literally anything. As long as the bazaar price is high. Like Obsidian can legit make 20 mil an hour even right now. Meaning just having a full mining setup allows you to take advantage of updates. Now Dwarven Mines Mithril is pretty bad compared to Gemstones. Unless you have the 5x Titanium buff from the Sky Mall perk. It is absolutely broken. With a max setup and a Skatha pet, one can make 60 mil per hour with this. Forging bad. Don't do it. Okay, I guess. If you are early game, get an efficiency 5 golden axe and a haste potion. Then farm the wood that sells for the most amount of coins in the bazaar. The major ways to make coins from dungeons are Floor grinding Find a permanent party using any big discord server. And then just grind I guess. The most profitable floors are floor 7 and any master mode floor above M2. I can't really make a fully fledged guide but I'll link a few in the description. In dungeons, you can make a few passive coins from secrets. The best ones are the treasure talismans and healing potions. If you are an early game player, dragon fragments should be a big part of your dungeon profits. 
Frag running is mostly done on two floors. F6, where you kill the giants that drop roses. It is also a really decent way to gain combat XP. So you can make extra coins by leveling up pets. The best weapon to grind this is a terminator, but a juju or a hype should work. Now the other floor you can frag run is F7, where you kill the giants in the blood room for their unique drops. The best way to grind them is by using a Hyperion. You should also use Black Cat and Maxor for speed. One of the oldest money making methods in Skyblock is grinding Zealots. Zealots aren't that profitable now as prices have completely crashed. But all you need is full young and you can make a few million per hour. There's also an upgraded version of Zealots that makes slightly more money compared to regular Zealots as they have a higher chance to drop summoning eyes. If you want to one-tap them, try using an Aurora Staff. You can also make some coins by farming end nodes. They are the shiny blocks found in the end. You should be able to make a decent amount of coins at early game by farming them. As for dragons, don't do them. Unless you're really lucky, you aren't gonna make any coins. But if you have a decent setup, you could make some coins by leeching dragons. Where you kill the dragon someone else spawned. You can farm regular endermen that drop ender armor, equipments, and pets that can then be sold for a decent amount of profit. You could probably make 2 to 3 mil per hour semi AFK while farming, which is not that high for the setup cost. At least right now. But once the garden update comes out, there will probably be a lot of items. So farming has potential to be better in the future. For fishing, there are a few methods. You can go to the park and fish up squids. You should be able to make a few coins from this. But you'll probably make more once you max out your ink sack and lily pad collection. As some of the items in these collections have decent margins. The fishing festival happens when Marina is mayor. You go to the spider's den and fish up sharks using the best fishing armor you have and a rod of legends. Don't forget to use shark bait. For Crimson Isles fishing, you need Fishing 45. And you need to have unlocked the Lord Jabba's sea creature. Once you've done that, form a fishing party and fish with the best armor you can. You should loot share for profit. Don't forget to use fish bait. For trophy fishing, get any non-fishing armor as you want the lowest sea creature chance possible. And get high fishing speed and fish up trophies in the volcano. You can sell them for a decent amount of coins. Don't forget to use hot bait. There are a few events that make a decent amount of coins, like the Spooky Festival. During the Spooky Festival, you can farm any mob to get candies. Candies sell for a decent amount of coins. You can also fish up special sea creatures one hour before and after the Spooky Festival, which makes a decent amount of coins. Don't forget to use Spooky Bait. During the Jerry event, you can go to the Jerry Island and make a decent amount of coins by farming the ice caves and fishing up winter sea creatures. Don't forget to use ice bait. During the farming festival, you can make coins by farming crops and also through the medals and Jacob tickets that sell for a decent amount of coins. In your private island, you can AFK minions for profit. The main minions you should AFK are Slime, Sheep, Chicken and Inferno. You could also AFK High Tier Revenant but they cost a lot of coins. You should use corrupt soil on the minions to actually make coins. You can also gain kills on the blood god's crest which is worth a decent amount of coins. You can also make some coins on your island by farming mycelium. And the perk is, you don't really need a lot of progression to do this. All you need is a few mycelium blocks, a block zapper, a builder wand and some dirt. I'll link a guide to it in the description. Now there are some mayors that can help you make a lot of coins, including Cole who is the mining mayor, he has mining fiestas, where you can make double profits from mining. When Diana is elected, you can dig up griffin burrows, to summon mobs, get items or coins. Depending on your griffin rarity, the profits increase. The legendary one is the most profitable, as you can get drops worth tens of millions. When Jerry is mayor, you can spawn hidden Jerry's by mining, farming or through other things. The Jerry's drop Jerry boxes that sell for a decent amount of coins. During Derpy, you can get 50% more combat XP, but the mobs have double HP. Meaning, if you can deal enough damage, 
can level up pets faster. Also, minions are a lot faster during therapy, so they make twice as much money. Scorpius gives you coins for voting for him, and when he is elected, you can get special items from the dark auction. And their prices increase with time, so they are a good investment. If you grind an update as soon as it comes out, you will definitely make money. Like people could make more than a hundred mil per hour mining mycelium when the Crimson Isles update first came out. Working at a fast food place like McDonald's makes around ten dollars hourly, which is around four point one five booster cookies, meaning you can make nineteen mil per hour working at McDonald's. We are at the final method, so if you are one of the three people who watched up to this point, I thank you. Now for the final method, contraband. No, this is not a money making method. I'm just asking you to give con. Was we were supposed to say thank you for us more than this. Give one of your own. We were supposed to say thank you for us more than this. So please, I'm going to see if I can find my mom. Maybe in the Discord and hopefully comment as I read all comments.